In today's lesson, we're going to talk about how to simplify radicals and how to know when to use the absolute value symbol or not. So let's say you have the nth root of x to the n. This is going to simplify to x. If the index number is even, and if it produces an odd exponent as a result, you need to use an absolute value. If the index number is odd, it doesn't matter what the result will be. You don't need to use the absolute value. So the only time you really need to use the absolute value symbol is if you have an even index number and the variable that comes out, if the exponent is odd, then you need to use the absolute value symbol. So let's work on some examples. If you want to try these examples, feel free to pause the video and work on them. By the way, if you want a list of formulas that are associated with radicals, including the one you just saw, uh, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to post a formula sheet associated with radicals for those of you who might uh, be interested in that. Now, for these problems, we don't see an index number. If you don't see an index number, it's assumed to be a 2, so it's even. The square root of x squared, what we need to do is divide these two. 2 divided by 2 will give us 1. So we get x to the first power. We started with an even index, and now we have an odd exponent as a result. Therefore, we need to use the absolute value symbol. So the answer is the absolute value of x. For the next one, we have the square root of x to the 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So since we have an even exponent as the result, not an odd exponent, we do not need to use the absolute value symbol. Because whenever you square something, it will always be positive. Now for the next one, we have the square root of x to the 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So since we have an odd exponent as the result, we need to use the absolute value symbol. So this is going to be the absolute value of x cubed. For the last one, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Since we have an even exponent as a result, we do not need to use the absolute value symbol. Go ahead and try these problems. The cube root of x to the third, x to the sixth, and x to the ninth. So the cube root of x to the third, 3 divided by 3 is 1. The cube root of x to the 6, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And for the next one, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Because the index number is odd, we're not going to have any absolute value symbols for our answers here. Now, go ahead and try these three problems. The fourth root of x to the fourth, the fourth root of x to the eighth, and the fourth root of x to the twelfth. 4 divided by 4 is 1, 8 divided by 4 is 2, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now, we do have an even index number, so we're going to have to use some absolute value symbols. Here, we have an odd exponent as the result, therefore, we need to put the absolute value symbol around x. Here, we have an even exponent, so it's always going to be positive, therefore, we don't need to use the absolute value symbol. Here we have an odd exponent as a result. Therefore, we do need to use the absolute value symbol. Go ahead and try this problem. What is the square root of 64 x squared y to the fourth z to the sixth power? Feel free to pause the video and work on this. So in this example problem, we have an even index number. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of x squared, we simply need to divide the exponents. So we take this exponent divided by the index number. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we have an even index number and odd exponent as a result. Therefore, we need to use the absolute value symbol around x. Now, moving on to the y variable, the square root of y to the fourth, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 
So for y, we have an even exponent as the result. Therefore, we don't need to use the absolute value symbol on y. Now what about z? 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have z to the third power. We have an odd exponent as a result. Therefore, we need to put z inside of the absolute value symbol. Let's try another example problem. Go ahead and simplify this radical. The cube root of 27 x to the third, y to the ninth, z to the 15. Now, since we have an odd index number, we're not going to have any absolute value symbols for this problem. So we could just go ahead and finish it. The cube root of 27 is 3. The cube root of x to the third, we take the exponent divided by the index number. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so it's just x. The cube root of y to the 9, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So this is just going to be y to the third power. And the cube root of z to the 15, 15 divided by 3 is 5, so it's simply z to the fifth power. So this is going to be our answer. It's 3x, y to the third, z to the fifth. Now let's try this one. Let's find the fourth root of 16x to the 8, y to the 12, z to the 20. So feel free to take a minute and try that example. So what is the fourth root of 16? What number multiplied by itself four times will give you 16? This is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. Now the fourth root of x to the eighth, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So do we need an absolute value symbol around x squared? We have an even index number, but we have an even result as the exponent. And since x squared will always be positive, we don't need the absolute value symbol around it. Now what about the fourth root of y to the 12? 12 divided by 4 is 3. We have an even index number, an odd exponent as a result, so we're going to use an absolute value symbol around y. Now the fourth root of z to the 20th, 20 divided by 4 is 5. So we have another odd exponent, therefore we need to use the absolute value symbol. So that's basically it for this video. So I wanted you to know like when you need to use absolute values and when you shouldn't when simplifying radicals. So hopefully these examples was enough to help you see when to use it and when not to use it. By the way, for those of you who want more practice problems on simplifying radicals, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting more videos on this topic for those of you who want extra practice. So thanks again for watching.